Hey guys, Mike here. So today we get to answer all your questions and I really have started to really enjoy doing this video and I appreciate all the questions you guys submit and also your participation in, in, in them as well. And you know, you have some really good questions uh, about obviously the new weightings, a lot of these stocks, some how you get these technical indicators on here. Uh, also about long-term investment and certain ways to do it and things like that. Uh, so we're going to get into all that and also triggered you guys on something I said the other day, which I will address and <laughs> put some clarity to that uh, while I'm thinking about it. Now, I do want to start by saying, you know, an extra special thanks to the extra support some of you guys give. And then Thomas, you uh, gave a $5 super chat. I really appreciate that. Also, another viewer gave it and also submitted a question uh, with theirs, which says, curious if you use technicals on your long positions, if you have any outside of your retirement accounts. I'm not a trader, but I find your work very informative in finding deals on things like REITs and junk bonds. And also, do you think AI is overblown or the next internet? Fellow U of A alumni, Roll Tide, and yes, Roll Tide, absolutely. And to start off with AI, honestly, it's not that it's overblown, and, and it definitely ain't the, the next internet or whatever. It could be in years. The biggest thing I keep telling people is the monetization of it, right? And so, like Nvidia, they're the picks and shovels. AMD is the picks and shovels. Like these guys, the chip companies got the advantage. They're selling these chips that other companies have to have. Now, the other companies had to figure out how to monetize it. Right, you can come up with a search engine all you want or whatever. You can come up with some programs AI, but you gotta figure out how to make money on it. Okay, and that's what happened in the dot com bubble. Everybody rushed to the internet's gonna be the next great thing, which it was gonna be. But there was just so many companies that couldn't monetize it, and they went splat down. Okay, and so uh, you know your your Microsoft, your Apple, even Tesla, uh, Nvidia, AMD, the Taiwan Semiconductor, all these guys, they're gonna be able to monetize this, right? It's just find the other companies that can do it and put in the comments if you know some companies you like that are doing it and how they're doing it, right? Like what program things are they going to use? My biggest uh, concern with AI and even uh, Elon Musk said this the other day, which is I, I, don't, I don't understand if AI is going to like take people's jobs just like the robots did on the assembly lines. I, I don't understand where we're going to work. I don't get it. Like Why would you have people? That's the whole point in AI. You know, when you make stuff more efficient, you get rid of people. And so, and if it's smarter than us, why do you need us? That, that's my big question. And again, it has to be, it can be a dangerous thing too. We've already seen that, by the way. And so, you know, it, it's going to have to be regulated one way or the other. And, and it's going to be interesting and fun times to see it. Okay. Now, when it comes to the long-term investment question you had, you know, I created this video like literally a couple weeks ago about long-term trend lines. There's multiple ways you can do it. Multiple ways you can DCA in or find an initial position or whatever. And, you know, when you look, though, and I showed you one on Disney the other day, right? It goes back to 1974. And you got to use either a logarithmic. Usually when you're doing a long one like this, you want to use a logarithmic to clean it up. But you can see, I mean, when this thing hits, and just like the other day, it, it popped. You know, can they break through? Sure. But it's been 1974. It hadn't. Okay. And they're big pops. You know, General Mills. Look at this one. It goes back to 1989, you know, and, and there it is. And so, you know, you can pull that one and you can play around with the lines and figure out, you know, on the stocks you own or stocks you want to get into, you know, which one works best. Nike, you know, this goes back to 1988, I believe. And you can see, where's it at? It's sitting on that line again. And these are big moves for Nike when it hits this line. A lot of times it's going to happen during crashes, sometimes not. And so, again, that's something you can do. With you. I encourage you with your own stocks. Go look at the charts. Go look. I mean, I'm literally creating a whole new channel in the Discord to do this. Start just putting stocks in there and having the members send me whatever stocks they have. If you want me to do it, I'll do it just fine. I'm a nerd and it's pretty, I can do it pretty quickly. You know what I'm saying? And another thing you can do is use like an EMA cloud or EMAs, you know, moving averages, right? And when it bounces, each stock is going to be different, right? But you can see, I mean, this right here followed that EMA cloud pretty well, right? There's many of them in trade view. There's also stocks when you look at them and you pull up different moving averages and play around with it that they respect really well. Like some people with Apple, if Apple ever gets a 200 moving average, they load the boat because they know it's going to be bouncing, right? And that's usually what happens. And usually you want to look at a weekly chart, not a, not a daily so much. But I mean, again, it's it depends on the, the stocks um, you're in and stuff. And each one of them will react different to a different moving average. Some of them may not have those trend lines. They're going Chinese stocks. You can't come up with those trend lines because all of them, when they came to the American stock market, they were just one big bubble. That's all it was. So they didn't have any kind of past, you know, uh, stuff to look at, no data to look at. And so 
you know, but that's just a couple ideas. You know, let me know what you think in the comments, how you guys do it. Cause I always love to see that kind of stuff. And guys, before we continue, if you're getting anything out of this, please hit that thumbs up down there. I really appreciate it. And if you like the material here and the videos, think about subscribing. Uh, now next one, uh, says I'm curious Mike what are your thoughts on TLT and TLTW I don't know TLTW but as far as like TLT you know what people are doing you're starting to see bigger orders come in right and you can see this in the volume if the simple way to do it is just pull up the volume that is a lot of green that's a huge spike up right so well above average just going back and so big move up there I know I've seen really large orders come in for not just TLT for other kind of bonds and what ETFs and stuff and what they're getting ready for is because a lot of people they're gonna start locking in bond yields now because they think they're going to drop right but when you you know we pull up the, the 10 year for example this just the yields people think these yields are going to start coming down and so what they're doing is they're positioning themselves for that move and you can see it's an inverse relationship obviously yields come down uh the etfs go up and when we come back here what they're positioning themselves for too also just in case there's a recession in a recession what happens is i'll scroll right here just to wait to kind of show you a great example is you get a big spike that's usually what happens because yields plummet. Because if we do go into a real recession, the Fed will have to cut, right? Or they'll cut some. When that happens, yields drop, it goes up. But even before the recession, you know, right here, they, they didn't cut until the recession was already on. But right here, you can see yields dropping already before the recession happens and, and TLT going up. And again, there's many different ETFs uh, to look at. I think AGG is one of them. Uh, and then there's a 3X leverage ETF for TLT. Uh, and stuff like that but that's what people are getting positioned for and big money is getting positioned for that i can tell you that right now you can see the orders coming in you see that volume uh next one is hey mike can you please address the large differences between the gap and small caps compared to the mag 7 a lot of retail are trapped and so when you're looking at this obviously yeah i mean uh, this is the mag 7 right there and i'll go into how to, how to get that uh, in just a minute but when you just pull up the iwm and this kind of shows you where money's been going going back to the beginning of the year but you can just look at this i mean yeah it's, it's going to the max seven it's not coming you see max seven running up right there going to october november right now we've just done this run up and and it's, it's just not you know it, it popped up on uh, iwm and then they just sold it off right but you can see i mean look at that drawdown right there you know that is a huge drawdown they got smacked down micro caps are even worse those are the smallest companies on the iwm i think it's the uh the thousand smallest companies on iwm if i'm not mistaken but, you know, and I just showed you, if you watched yesterday's video, this is the first time we've ever seen a rally in the market like this, supposedly off a bear market low, and small caps just aren't participating. And that's just strange. That's what it is. I mean, even the, a lot, so many of the stocks just aren't being bought and participating. in. so this market is starting to spread their breath out a little bit. But for the most part, it is just these seven stocks. Probably you can branch out to maybe 15 or something. But that's just, it could do with AI, it could do with a lot of stuff, it could do with the fact that yields are just so high and it's terrible, terrible for small caps in this environment and their earnings haven't been that great. So again, usually something gets so beat down that it finally gets some love. You just got to figure out when big money is going to start moving money out of those mag sevens into IWM. That's really what it comes down to. And you would think it would have happened by now. But again, let me know what you think in the comments on that one. Now, how to get the indicator for the MAG7 is like this. Because Brandon here is asking, since Brandon here is asking for it, this is how you get it. Just go into trade view right there. And you can pause it if you want to, but you're going to type in NASDAQ colon Amazon plus, and then just copy and paste that NASDAQ colon and then just type in those tickers. Okay. And it's just the seven tickers. And then it will pop up for you and you'll have it and you can track it. So, and you can sit there and chart it and everything else. It really does pay off to watch it because if it's going up, the market's going up, it's going down. The market going down no matter what any of the other stocks are doing that's what you'll see and so yeah, that way you, you'll see if it's moving i mean that's where it is right there now next one says mike did you see that the sp 500 weight shifted from apple being the most weighted stock on sp 500 to microsoft being at the top company uh, do you know how often these weights get updated the answer is no i do not uh, this could explain Microsoft keeps going higher. That's absolutely probably true, to be honest with you. And when you look at it, I've actually got different sources on this. So if you have a different source, let me know. But when you look on Yahoo, it'll show you that they're equal. And the SPY right there is 7.14%. Uh, but then when I go over to a different source, if I still look at the SPY ETF on a different source, it says that Microsoft 7.33 and Apple 7.31. And then when you go over to the queues to see if anything changed, you see Apple is still number one. And Microsoft is 10.41 uh, versus Apple 11.04. And so let me know what you're getting on that. I, I would have 
multiple sources that's all i can find and stuff so if you have a, a better source that says what microsoft is weighted at right now and look i've always said i think microsoft's a better company than apple they just don't buy as much i think for the future going forward especially when it comes to their growth and, and how much they can grow uh compared to apple but apple you know obviously they buy way more stock back uh, which helps them with their numbers and helps obviously push the stock up and stuff and they pay i think a higher dividend i don't know if microsoft pays a dividend but uh, you know, so that's really the big thing. And plus, you know, it, Berkshire Hathaway owns so much Apple. I think it's like 50% of their stock portfolios in Apple. And so, and it's the high and the biggest held in pension funds and everything else. So, uh, yeah, let me know if you come up with something on that. Now, obviously, I triggered some people <laughs> the other day when I was talking about groceries. And I said, man, you know, you look in your trunk, you got 12 bags and stuff. And boy, people just uh came at me like what are you talking about right here you see it's like you got 12 bags of groceries for 150 it's like even at walmart five bags or 175 dollars and uh just going off right there do a youtube on shopping i guess i need to try that right uh another one in seattle it's more like three bags of groceries for 150 dollars uh, another one comes out and says dude 150 maybe two bags and so let me clarify here the walmart i go to for whatever reason right terrible business practice here they actually only put like three items i don't care how big the items are three little items in like each bag it drives me nuts because i don't like waste i mean that's such a waste because they're doing it for me they're doing it for everybody right so it could i mean honestly three to four bags if it was really full yes you're right three to four bags even in florida three to four bags cost 150 dollars so you know, but i asked some of you guys and, and there was like literally probably 50 60 comments about those bags of groceries i just picked out three right there but yes, uh, I mean, you guys are right, three or four bags. It is sickening to me to go, that's $150, really? And there's no steak or filet mignon or, you know, lobster in those bags that we order. And so, you know, yeah, I, I don't, it, it's a shame. And I will say one thing I do a piss poor job of, every time I say it, and I know I'm wrong as soon as the video is over or whatever. But yes, when, when people are upset because they say, man, inflation's coming down, and this is where it always messes up, but it's, it's true. And thank you for some of you guys in the comments. It's, Inflation is just increasing prices, right? And increasing prices. Did I just say that right? Now, understand when the Fed presidents just came out and said, or whatever their name is, said that, oh, prices will never go back. Like, so the increase in prices is coming down. They're not increasing as much. But the prices, if you're looking for them to go back to 2019 pre pandemic, like that probably is never going to happen. I mean, it just is. And like, not without a severe like recession, and especially if you understand. I just read something the other day, or actually this morning. Uh, no, it was yesterday that like we can't even like the price of beef or whatever is going up because we, we can't either raise enough in this country. So we're trying to import cheaper meat and all kinds of crazy stuff. But, you know, that's why you're seeing these prices. Plus, you know, what is Walmart? And when you got only a few companies that dominate the grocery industry, there's just no incentive, right, for them to bring prices down. because There's nowhere else for you to go. And so and they, they basically ran all the small companies. Like I used to work for a family owned uh, grocery store business. They're gone. You know, and, and so most of them are just gone anyway. So as the competition dwindles in the grocery industry, the less competition means prices will remain higher, unfortunately. And that hits that hits everybody, but especially, you know, people out there. If you're getting, making a certain amount or less, it's, it's even tougher. Right. And so uh, and gas prices the same way as oil is still cratering down. So you would think gas would continue to come down. But yes, you guys are right. Three to four bags is 150 bucks, at least in the South. I can only imagine California is probably 300. New York's probably 300 for three or four bags. But let me know in, in your area what, what that is and stuff. And so hopefully that makes sense. And thank you for that. Now, the next one was, which I figured would get a lot of talk, was we were talking about the labor force, right? And a lot of people got very upset at me about that one. And they said, look, demographically, we don't have younger workers. That is a big component of the inflation, in my opinion. Immigration is a solution to a lot of our problems. It, and I'll get into that in just a second. I'm going to read through these. And there was at least 100 comments on this. I just picked a few. Many of foreign workers are highly skilled, coming on H-1B visas, willing to work for much less than American college kids. Next one says, the type of people who get mad at immigrant workers have so much misdirected frustration. If you're upset about an immigrant getting a job, one, why don't you apply for the types of jobs they are taking? Two, get mad at the people hiring the immigrants. And so I appreciate all the comments. I know this is a hot topic, right? Big time. And, and the one person's right. Yes, they're highly educated people that come in here and are hired. I have, I have, I have literally have friends right now that, that did this. Come in, get their, I think they're, I forgot what they call it, whatever the company sponsors them, I think it is. And they get paid way less, right? Now, who's, who's to blame for that? The immigrant who is getting out of the country and coming here and, and living the American dream or the company? And more importantly, this is where it gets missed, the government. You don't think they know this is going on? 
Of course they know what's going on, right? But it's cheap labor, right? And a lot of the companies, you know, their stock prices go higher and all this good stuff, right? Because of this. And then, though, what my friends did, all of them, once they became citizens, buddy, they left those companies. They were gone. And they got paid just like Americans. That's the way it works. But it's not their fault. It's the government doesn't fix that and it keeps allowing it to happen and the people employing them. And that's the thing about illegal immigrants. You know, restaurants. I remember I literally called HR one time. I haven't, you know, and I'm sitting there going, hey, I don't think this is this person. They go, that's not your job. We'll get sued, right? We, we just, you send it to us. We run it through. It is what it is. I mean, so I knew there was people illegal working there, but it's like, I, I call corporate. Like, what do you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? And it's, that's just the way it is. You know, look at these construction uh, companies. Give me a break. You know, there's plenty of Americans who love to have those jobs, but they ain't going to, you know, <laughs> they, can, they, they can pay somebody way less who they know is illegal and take full advantage of them, by the way, in a bad way. You know, but I, again, I always say this. I'm all about putting my, myself in somebody else's place. And first of all, the one thing about people and people get very upset when I say this, but I don't really care is, you know, I'm very open about this with my family, everybody. It's like, brother, I know I was just lucky to be born here. Like that, that's serious. I like to keep things in perspective. I was just lucky to be born here. I didn't do anything to deserve to be an American. Yeah, I went and served the military. I think it should be mandatory, to be honest with you. That's a whole other subject. But, you know, again, I just happened to have somebody down my family tree who took that trip on a boat or wherever they came over on and made the sacrifice. That's it. So unless you're a Native American, eh, you know, you're all, everybody's foreigners at some point in time in our family. We just hadn't become Americans. All right. And if I was in the shoes of those people getting on those trains and trying to come here, I'd be trying to come here too. The bad thing is, what people don't realize is, if you try to think about educated people who try to come here, it takes years for them to get here. Educated, I'm talking about highly educated. It takes years. Can you imagine somebody that hasn't even have a high school degree? What kind of line they're standing in? 10, 20, 30. And we actually need them. That's the thing. We, we know for a fact we need them. There's no doubt about that, right? But it, it, the immigration system is broken because the politicians like to run on it. And they like to push your buttons. Beep, 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 beep. Right. And you think one party really wants to fix it. And it's like, give me a break. No, if they, it's the case, they would have fixed it when they had uh, the majorities in both all the houses, the House, the Senate and the presidency. They didn't do anything as far as legislation. Nope. That's the way it works. And so, you know, that, that's that's how it is, whether you like it or not. So appreciate all the comments and stuff. I know I love to see the passion. You know, that's the way we do things here. And again, if you have any more questions, please put them in the comments. If you have any answers to these questions, please put them in the comments. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.